the high point in the relationship. We have the video. <laughs> 2005, Highbury Tunnel. Here we go. So, um, that's five foot ten Roy Keane saying, don't pick on five foot eleven Gary Neville, pick on one of us. Do you know what? That always looks worse than what it really was, honestly. It wasn't, I, I don't think it was as bad as that. The, um, you were right, you touch on it in your book, obviously, and you say that initially Vieira had been talking to Gary and you came back into the dressing room and you sort of said, what's going on here? And, and you said, Roy, I was busy g myself up in the camway. The last thing I wanted was Gary in my ear hole going, they've been shouting at me in the tunnel. My attitude was, deal with it, you're not 11. <laughs> so, <laughs> what changed from Gary in your ear hole, it's a great word, to you, something, something about Vieira and what was going on obviously clicked. Yeah, but Gary was, ner Gary was like that before every game. He would be a bit like twitchy and nervous and, um, and the problem with the Arsenal lads that time, I, I, I wasn't, People look back on my career. I wasn't really into that um, argy bargy stuff in the tunnels and threatening people. I wasn't. Honestly, it wasn't my scene. <laughs> Jesus, listen out. I um, I wasn't. But when I see lads then having <coughs> almost picking on somebody, and I don't mean just on Nev. There was three or four of them, Martin Keown and people like that. So that probably it was more the bullying than kind of fellas getting stuck into each other on the pitch. I I I, I think if you have any argo with people, you bring it all onto the pitch. This tunnel stuff. And the most important thing about that night was and maybe forgotten about it, is that we actually we had to win the game, and we won the game. Yeah. There's no point doing all this carry-on in the tunnel and then going out and get beaten. So the, the key was to win the match, and just put Arsenal, one or two lads in their place. But that was yeah. no big deal. I'm sure it happens plenty, it's just the cameras were there, that's the issue. Of course, again, yeah. I, honestly, I thought it looked probably a lot worse than what it was. Does any part of you, Gary, regret it happening that all these years later we're still talking about it as Roy riding into the rescue? Do you think you just should have gone back into the dressing room and said nothing? It came from the first Arsenal game in the season where we'd basically booted hell out of them, to be fair. And Antonio Reyes, God rest his soul, um, we had not targeted him, we just were very aggressive against them. And I think that that feeling that the Arsenal players, it was suggested, were, you know, that we'd bullied them essentially at Old Trafford and that we kicked them off the park. And then I've never, I'd never seen it before, to be fair, where... Usually during the game, things could happen. But Vieira literally chased me up the tunnel off the warm-up and started saying, you're not going to kick our fucking players today. So it's quite unusual. So I thought it was well within my rights to report that back into the change room to the captain. <laughs> <laughs> you know, seeing as though he was going to be directly playing against him. No, so Dennis was sat here and Roy was sat there. I just said, fucking Vieira's fucking, he's gone. He's fucking had a right go at me in the tunnel. To which I'm not quite sure what he did, to be honest with you, at that point. And then he waited for me in the tunnel. Before those shots there, he waited yeah. for me in the tunnel and basically um, you know, knelt down. I think he was like a, pretending to do his laces and started having a go again. And then obviously then Roy turned around because he heard it and basically, I think he squirted a water bottle at you. I'm not, I, don't know. I think he squirted a water bottle at you or something. And then Roy sort of said, you know, what he said, he start, I think he started talking about his charities and his um, other things and <laughs> questioned a few other things. <laughs> Some great lines, there really were. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I think on the pitch, I always have to, they scored first. And Ashley Cole, who I used to sit next to in the England dressing room for like eight years, he comes screaming in my face, like proper. So I was thinking, what the fuck's going on here? And, then, and in the end, to be fair, they were a little bit emotional, weren't they? They were. I don't, I don't know where it came from, whether it was in the dressing room, because I don't think it would have been Arsene Wenger. I can't think that he would have said to him, you know, go for them before the kickoff or go yeah. to them after, you're, uh, you know, after you've celebrated. But uh, it was a night nice Shazy scored, wasn't it, when he went through? Yeah. To go back to 
earlier days when you were in the first team and the class of 92 were starting to come through and we hear that there were practice matches and they were being integrated slowly into the first team. How highly did you rate them? Were you looking at them thinking we've got something very special here? Yeah, no, listen, sometimes when you're working, when we were at United, the players would we'd bring across one or two younger players. But when these lads started coming across, there's always pitfalls, players getting injured, etc. But we knew these lads were here to stay. And I always make the point when I talk about, I suppose, particularly my time at United, what we had in the dressing room, as well as obviously very, very good players, really brilliant characters, really good guys, guys you, will, you want to be in the trenches with. And if you've got that combination, if you've got really good players and they're good characters, then trust me, you're going to win a lot of football matches and you're certainly going to be in the mix for winning the big prizes. And there was no surprise, obviously, Gary and all the lads obviously went on to great stuff in terms of playing regularly for United consistently over the years. We see a lot of lads come on the scene, or they'll have one good season, they disappear. The lads, and Butty, and obviously Giggsy, Bex, Phil, Scolzi, brilliant players over a long period of time. Good attitudes, trained properly. I, strange enough, even, even though I was at Forest, great examples as well there. And you automatically think, when you work with these lads, you're going, surely every player or every team up and down the country is doing what we're doing in terms of training properly, having a good attitude. But unfortunately, when you leave United, you go to other clubs, you find out that not everyone has such good attitudes. So as much as I used to be, people always think I was a rant and rave and I'd be shouting at the lads all the time. It wasn't the case. Because when you leave and you obviously eventually retire, you realise what good players there were. I've got to remember at the time there was Robson there, there was Ince, there was Schmeichel, Cantona, Hughes, yeah. Pallister, Bruce. I mean, they were monsters. Every single one of them was a captain, a character, a personality. And Roy at that time probably was younger. I mean, he was younger than those lads and, and obviously was a huge personality and character, but it hadn't evolved into what it became at that point, I would say. I think what happened was then obviously over a period of time, over sort of two or three years, those lads started to leave. And then obviously Roy emerged into the person and individual that he was, which was the most, in, most inspirational football player that I ever played with and the most demanding player that I ever played with. And actually someone who mirrored the boss. He mirrored the boss, simple as that, on the pitch. He was so like him in the sense of, not accepting of a drop in standard, not accepting, you know, but I always say a bad pass was a crime, um, let alone, you know, giving goals away or, God forbid, not applying yourself or showing a level of professionalism or effort in training or something like that. So when it comes to the point of sort of the three, four years, going up to sort of 97, 98, 99, then going beyond that, you're talking about the most formidable football player that you would ever see on a football pitch. The person that everybody in the club wanted to see at the front of the line, um, bar none. And like I, say when he, I said earlier on today, when he left the club, that was a moment that no one in the football club, in the team, in the dressing room wanted to happen. You know, this idea, you know, Roy obviously, you know, the perception in terms of what he is as a person, in terms of, you know, everyone thinks about, he said himself, I wasn't ranting and raving all the time. He was popular, incredibly, like, hugely popular, funny, um. <laughs> so basically you had this person that you essentially see reported on that you actually don't recognise because okay. you know him in the change room as someone completely different.